And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use our PayPal Smart uh, Checkout Buttons plugin in Bubble, how to configure it, how to set it up, how to use all the various different API calls, and just to give you a basic uh, introduction into the plugin and into accepting payments via PayPal. So a few things you will need is, first of all, a Bubble application. Um, you will also need our plugin. Um, and you will also need a PayPal developer account and you can sign up for a PayPal developer account by using your normal PayPal credentials if you have one or have some um, and if not you can just create a new account and you want to create a new application in PayPal and there are two types of applications you have sandbox and live applications and as the name already implies sandbox is for testing and live applications are your real life applications. And um, I'm going to head over to the plugins tab now. And currently we have no install plugins. I'm going to go and add plugins. And I'm going to install our PayPal plugin, which should come at the top. Yep, that's the way it looks. PayPal checkout smart payments. I just authorized the application here. I'm going to click on install. Okay. Once you installed this plugin, it will be displayed here. And you will have some more instructions. Um, and see what is contained in this plugin. We can go through it. So first of all, we have the PayPal element, which is uh, which displays the actual buttons. We have three events which can be triggered. We have some uh, API calls, which are all of these, and we have two actions here, which generate our access token. And but more about that in a second. What is important here now is we have one time the client ID and the currency, both for the live version of our uh, Bubble application and the development version. Important now here is under client ID, you should copy your client ID from your application and PayPal. And here you can either post or enter your sandbox client ID, which will mean that all buttons will go through your sandbox account uh, or all payments will go through your sandbox account and um, can be used for testing purposes. And if you switch over to your live um, application, you can enter your live client ID. What you could also do, you could use your sandbox client ID for your development version of your Bubble application and your live client ID for your live version. So please always remember there's a development version of Bubble and a live version of your Bubble application. The same applies to currencies. Um, under currencies, you can enter what currencies uh, you want to accept your payments in. Um, we're going to choose US dollar um, for a full list of um, available currencies, you can go through to, to our documentation. There's a PayPal page displaying all currencies. And again, you can uh, differentiate between the de development version of your bubble application and the live uh, version. Uh, please don't leave this empty because if you leave this empty, it won't work. Please always enter um, a currency that you want to use. Um, we're going to go with US dollars. I'm also going to paste my um, client ID here from PayPal. Um, this is my sandbox client ID, so all payments now will be um, in the sandbox mode. And we're also only going to work with our development version here in Bubble. Uh, we're not going to use the live version, so we're only going to use the uh, development version, the preview function here. Okay, great. So um, let me go back to um, our design page and let me start off by simply searching for our PayPal element, which should be visible here now. Great. I'm just going to drag this onto the page. Okay. We're just going to center this. And we only have one field that we have to fill in, which is the value, which is obviously how much you want to charge. And please keep in mind, you entered the currency before, which in this case is US dollars. So let's say you want to charge $15. Um, and you could, of course, also insert dynamic value. So let's say um, your page um, is a listing, so you could say, okay, this should be the current page listings value or price or whatever that is in your database. So you can populate this field from your database. Okay, let's click on preview now and just see if this first basically version works. Okay, great. So as you can see, it works. It doesn't look perfect yet. It's kind of distorted here, but it works. We have these three buttons. We have PayPal. Uh, Zepa Lastschrift, which is a German way of paying um, and it's displayed because I'm situated in Germany and of course debit or credit card. And it's a beautiful way of having a complete checkout flow. If I just take a look at PayPal here and we just load this quickly, um, it should display the value here on top. So let me just quickly create an account and it says at the top, let's give it a second. Um, 
15 US dollars, which is exactly the value we entered in our element. Okay, great. We can play around with this a bit more. We can um, increase the height to give it a bit more space for the credit card field. Um, we can also uh, apply maximum width. Okay, so if we take a look at that now, this should look a lot nicer now. This should be centered and not as big. Yup, great. Okay, great. So as you can see, the element works already. So let's take a look at the further functionality. So um, we have access to three events. Okay, if we go to workflow, uh, we can go to elements and we can see, okay, a PayPal payment has been successful, it has been canceled, or there was an error. These are triggered when either of these three scenarios happens. Okay, so for example, let's have a pay when a PayPal element has been canceled. We want to show a pop-up, which we have first uh, have to create. So let's show this pop-up, and the pop-up says um, there has been an error. Okay, let me just center that quickly, and now let's say okay, when the PayPal payment has been canceled, we want to show our pop-up A. Let's try that. Let's refresh our page here. Okay, so let's initiate payments uh, by clicking on PayPal. And now let's just cancel this. Awesome. As you can see, we have this pop-up here displayed because our PayPal payment has been canceled. The same place applies for all of these other payment methods. We always get the um, pop-up every time there has been an error. Again, same applies for um, um, if there has been an error. The difference between canceling and error means cancel is made by the user and error is just an error. And of course, if a PayPal payment has been successful, okay? In this case, you usually want to do something. You want to redirect the user to a confirmation page. You want to create a new order a thing in your database and so on and so forth. Or you want to send an email. This is your way of checking has a PayPal, PayPal payment been successful. So you definitely want to use this. Okay, great. So let's continue. Um, let's actually just take a look here uh, into our design page. And what I'm going to do. I'm gonna just insert a button here, okay? And we're not actually gonna use this button, I'm just gonna use it to demo some stuff for you. So let's click on Start at a Workflow. And we can now um, use the various actions which are included in this plugin, okay? So if we go ahead over to Plugins, you can see all the five API calls that we have access to. And let me quickly explain that to you. So what happens here? In our plugin, if a user uh, pays or pays the amount and uh, completes a payment, you ca you basically authorize this payment from his credit card, PayPal account, and so on and so forth. What does authorization mean? Authorization means you kind of put a hold on the amount, but you're not yet taking this money. And we did it on purpose because this is very useful for various um, kind of applications. Let's say, for example, you have a marketplace and a buyer can buy a thing, but then a seller has the opportunity to either accept or reject it, okay? Um, and for this, um, authorizing and then capturing a payment later is very, very helpful. You can also immediately capture a payment by just running the capture uh, authorized call, um, but you can also have a time period between this to wait until capturing a, a, a payment, okay? So you have access to it by, by using the PayPal capturize, capture authorized uh, payment, okay? And PayPal or the uh, plugin will ask you for an authorization ID and uh, the standard authorization which begins with bearer, okay? So what does all of this mean? First of all, when a PayPal um, payment has been successful here using this element, you have access to two, two basically results, okay? And we can use this, for example, here by going to PayPal's, PayPal A's authorization ID or order ID. And what we can do with this, we can basically, we can get access to the authorization ID and the order ID that, that will be created when a payment has been successful, okay? In most cases, you don't wanna display this as a value here. What you wanna do, you wanna actually go ahead and say, for example, okay, so when a PayPal payment has been successful, I wanna, let's say, cr create a new thing so let's just quickly create that. We have a new thing called order, and an order consists of a, a authorization ID, okay, which is of type text, and the order ID. Okay, great. So let's, for example, say, okay, when a PayPal payment has been successful, we want to create a new order, and the authorization ID 
should be this PayPal's authorization ID and the order ID should be this PayPal's order ID. So really simple, we take the resulting authorization order ID from the successful payment and create a new order with it because we can use this data later on. So what you could do now, for example, you could say, okay, I want to uh, capture a payment, okay, capture a payment. So what we could do now, we could say, okay, start at a workflow when this is pressed, we want to capture an authorized call, okay, it is authorized here, and I want to capture it, and which, which payment do we want to capture? We have to enter the authorization ID, and you could either say, okay, I want to use this objects, this orders uh, authorization ID, or the current user's order ID, whatever. In this case, I'm just going to use um, PayPal ACE authorization ID, okay? So what is happening here? When a user checks out, the payment is authorized, and then if we click this button, the same payment is immediately captured. Again, a few days could... Um, basically be between the authorization and the capturing process. That always depends on what you want to do and on your application, okay? You're probably now wondering what should go here. And this is, um, for beginners, a bit of a confusing thing, okay? Um, what you will need is, besides your client ID, which is not really secret, you will need um, an access token from PayPal. And the thing with this access token is it has an expiration date, okay? First of all, how do you get an access token, okay? You get an access token uh, within one of our actions. So I'm just going to create a new button here and I'm going to call this get access token, okay? And let's say, okay, when this is pressed, you have access to under payment, you can get an access token for either your live application or for your sandbox application. Because we're working with our sandbox application, I'm going to select this. And now what you have to do, you have to enter your client ID but this time also your secret ID, okay? Great. Um, so when this button is pressed, your application will make a call to PayPal and will receive an access token, okay? And if this is successful, you will get some data as a return. And you could, for example, so that's now one of various ways you could use this. So for example, you could have a data type here called um, access token, which is in your uh, um, in your database, and we have two fields. We have the token itself, which is of type text, and we have an expiration date, which is of type integer. We're going to take a look at that in a second, okay? And now, for example, you could say, okay, I want to, when this button is pressed, I want to get my access token, and I want to save it, obviously, and I want to do um, or maybe create a new thing of type access token, and the expiration of this should be the result of step one's expiration. And the token should be the result of step one's token. So you can see you have access to three things. The token, the expiration, and if there has been an error, the error. Okay. So now your access token is saved in your, or as your thing here, or your new thing called access token. Okay. Great. You can now use this access token here in your API call. So, for example, you could say, okay, let's go back here to when the capture payment button is pressed. I want to capture my pay, uh, PayPal authorization ID here with my authorization. And you always have to include bearer, add a space, and then use your token. In this case, our token would be do a search for access token first item token. Okay. Because, let's remember this, we save our access token here as a new access token in our database. We can then um, enter that here and it will take your access to token from the database. And what you would want to do as well, you want to um, set the privacy rules so only admins or only yourself can use or do a search for this access token. You're probably wondering now, okay, that's nice, but uh, you said the access token expires. And yes, that's true. It usually has a lifetime of a few hours only. So you have to constantly um, refresh that. And obviously, you don't want to refresh that manually here. Um, you want to kind of have um, an automated way of doing this. And the best way that we do this is by having an API workflow, which runs all the time. So let's take a look at how that will work. Okay. Um, what you want to do for this, you want to first of all create this type, data type, called access token, okay, expiration token, and you just want to create one value of this, okay, 
So one entry, and the first value of this entry doesn't matter. So just enter something. So we have one entry in our database of access token, and you always only want to have one entry, okay? So let's take a look at what to do next. We want to head over to settings. We want to head over to API. We want to say this uh, we should enable backend workflows, okay? And now this can be a bit confusing, but we want to head over to backend workflows, and we want to add a new endpoint. And this new API endpoint, okay, should be called, let's say, refresh token. This should not be public, um, but we can ignore privacy rules, okay? And what this should do, this should make a call to our access token endpoint, either live or sample, let's stay with sandbox. It should get our access token. It should then save this new access token in our database entry. So things to change should be do a search for access tokens first item. And we want to change the field token to be this access token token. Okay, so in this case, or result of step one's token and result of step one's expiration. And what we then want to do, and this is a bit confusing maybe, after we made the call, we saved our access token, we want to schedule an API workflow, and the API workflow we want to schedule is the same one again. So this is kind of a recursive API workflow that would always will always run basically it forever until you stop it. And we want to run this workflow, refresh token, and the date we want to schedule this at should be the current date time plus seconds whatever the result of step one's access token expiration is. This expiration field that is returned from the step here is in seconds, and let's say it has an expiration of 6,000 seconds. So what happens? We get our access token, we save it, we can use it then, and we'll schedule to refresh our access token in 6,000 seconds when this access token has expired. And so, this will schedule this workflow and it will run again. And the same thing will happen over and over again. And you can always use the newest access token and it will refresh automatically. And you have a nice way of basically um, refreshing your access token every time completely um, automatically. Okay. The only thing you would have to do, you would have to trigger this one time manually by um, just basically having a button in your application. You want to call this maybe trigger. And what you want to do, you want to just manually trigger this one time by going in here and saying, okay, um, I want to schedule an API workflow, I want to schedule a refresh token, I want to schedule this now. And then you simply have to just one time go into your application, click this button one time, and the whole backend workflow will start, okay, and it will run over and over again, and you will never have to click any button again or basically trigger anything, okay? I hope that is understandable. Um, but now the awesome thing about this is you can always use your access token in all workflows and don't you don't have to think about if it's uh, the current access token, if it's live, if, it, if it's expired, and so on and so forth. And now it's simple. Now you can always say, okay, uh, I want to ca capture my payment here using my access tokens token. And now this will always be up to date. Okay. Let me just go through all of the... Um, API endpoints we have here. So capturing an authorized call, we explained already. Reauthorizing an order um, is if you uh, put an authorization on a payment, so a payment has been made, and you wait a long time, so usually that's over 29 days, um, and you want to reauthorize this order just to make sure the funds are still there. You can do this by using this PayPal um, uh, API call. Verifying an order will just make sure is that order correct and will just give you basically a success return. Voiding an authorized call is basically the opposite of capturing authorized call. So again, let's remind ourselves, we authorize a call um, by putting a hold on the funds and we can then either say, okay, let's capture this funds now. We want to confirm this order by capturing it or we want to void this order. So basically kind of refunding is it but it's not really refunding it's just kind of canceling the authorization okay and you can do this by using the void call and w if you capture a payment and all goes through all is good but then for some reason you want to refund the payment you can use the refund captured order as well okay 
So please only use void authorized call if you have not captured a payment yet, so if, if it's only authorized, and if you already captured a payment and went through and you still want to refund the money, you can use refund captured order. Okay? And this is basically it. Um, I know it's a lot, um, but I think this tutorial helped a lot into explaining how um, this plugin works. You can always look into um, the PayPal documentation. This is the best way to make yourself uh, familiar with all the different API calls. Um, and if you have questions, you can always send us an email. Um, the most important thing I would say is this whole access token thing, which might be confusing uh, at the beginning, but I would highly recommend using this kind of scheduling API workflow, which runs all the time, uh, so you don't have to uh, worry about having an up-to-date access token. Okay? So yeah, that's basically it regarding this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial soon. Bye.